The days don't get much bigger than they will on Sunday at Chartin. We have $95 million spread across four Group 1 races, and three of those four are the richest Group 1 turf races in the world. That is in their respective divisions, the Cup, the Mile and the Sprint. We have representatives from Japan, from Ireland, from France taking on Hong Kong's best on Sunday at Chartin. It is the Turf World Championships. <laughs> It's going to be a really special day, and welcome to a special edition of Hong Kong Direct as well. I'm Andrew Lejeune, pleased to be joined by our special guests in uh, Graham Cunningham and Ed Sadler as well. And Ed, uh, despite all the problems we've obviously had this year, everyone's um, suffered. We've got an outstanding lineup for our four Group Ones. We do indeed, Andrew, yes. If you can't get excited about this weekend's racing, you never will. There's something on offer in each of the four Group 1s. We start, obviously, with the Vars, where Exultant, the reigning horse of the year, will be taking on a younger challenger in Mogul from Ireland. Then in the sprint, can Classic Legend bring the form that saw him win the Everest in Australia up against Hot King Prawn, who probably deserves a Group 1 win. Golden 60's taken all before him here in Hong Kong. He deserves a Group 1 in recognition of what he's done. And in the cup, well, with the horse, from France, Ireland, Japan and here in Hong Kong with Furore and that promised to be a super clash so I can't wait. No, and we've got uh, of course uh, Graham two returning champions um, from last year as well. Can they step up once uh, more and defend their crowns? Well I think Admire Mars is bound to go really well even allowing uh, for Golden 60 in the mile but the way I look at this uh, weekend we're getting towards the business end now and this shows to highlight the colour and the flavour of the occasion but it's also hopefully pointing people in the right direction and it's a case of whether you're going to go for the obvious a horse who has a peak performance that can win the race like classic legend in the sprint or magical uh, in the cup or a horse who might be sitting on a peak performance that's just ready to deliver at the right time. So some short price favourites like Classic Legend, uh, like Magical, like Golden 60. Golden 60 is potentially the story. He is on Hong Kong through and through. He's the ultimate racing bubble horse all the way through from January. And for Vincent Ho, who's only had a handful of Hong Kong international races rides ever, he's got two of the most important dates of his life on Sunday on Classic Legend and then on Golden 60. Yeah, with every hurdle they put in front of him, though, he jumps it, Golden 60. We'll come back to him and the rest of them in due course. We're going to start off, though, with our first race is the Longines Hong Kong Vars. $20 million on the table here over the 2,400 metres, featuring Exultant, previous winner and reigning horse of the year, Exultant. He'll jump from Barrier 5. Shifano for David Hayes from 7. Ho Ho Khan from 2. Columbus County. Joe Moreira for Casper Fouts from Barrier 1. Royal Julius, now he's the overseas runner here from Barrier 3, along with uh, Claire Del Puente and Mogul, Group 1 winner himself, only a three-year-old, so he carries £121. And I'm pleased to say that we're joined by Aidan O'Brien a couple of times throughout uh, today's uh, programme. First up, though, of course, Vaz has been a good race for Aidan. He's won it twice uh, with Highland Reel. We caught up with him to get his thoughts heading into the weekend. It's a great meeting, a great time of the year. 
um, uh, it, it's it's great to be going there and, and uh, competing with, with all their best horses and I think any of the best horses in the world that are able to travel and are still going at that time want to be there. Um, I think it's great for world ratings and rankings. Um, horses, you can get a handle on all the farm, even though maybe some of the horses mightn't make it that far through the season, but you can still get a, a guide on what the horses are down there and, and they're up here and in, I suppose all over the world really. Highland Reel tries to go with him. They beat off Elaine Happy Star. Darian trailing up behind them. Highland Reel in for the fight. He regained the lead from Flincher. Then Darian, but it's Highland Reel. Aidan O'Brien, his first victory in the Hong Kong bars, and Highland Reel defeats the defending champion. He was a um, very uh, sound, genuine, clear winded horse. Very easy to train. Loved travelling. Loved fast ground, uh, loved to go forward in his races. Um, he was just a very, very good horse. Talismanic gets on terms with Highland Reel. He won't surrender. Toes and Battles run is coming to an end. But Irish eyes are smiling. Highland Reel, what a fitting finale. Highland Reel takes the bars from Talismanic. He always thought he was a very good horse. He, he, he's made like a miler. He's strong. He's powerful. I suppose he's made like a, a Dane Hill miler. Um, he, obviously, he's by Galileo, but he's out of a Dane Hill mare. So we always thought the world of him. He was. Um, he always went through his work very strong. Like we went to France and we knew there was going to be real nice ground, which he likes. We it was a mile and a half and. We had other horses in the race and we knew it was going to be a solidly run race and we said to Pierre, listen, just put him asleep, take your time and, and uh, produce him late. And very, it became very apparent, like obviously Pierre gave him a brilliant ride and it became very apparent, very halfway through the race, what was going to happen. Mogul in the blue and orange is taking it up. Gold trip with a noseband in second position. Serpentine behind those. In swoop staying on well in the closing stages, but as they race towards the line, Mogul safely clear. One by at least two, maybe three. He, he's a horse likes a nice strong run race and take your time on him. And, and uh, those things don't always happen that way. He went to America and the pace was very slow and messy and it just didn't work then. But um, he's a very exciting horse, Gary, when you can ride him like that and take your time and you can quicken. wish you were there we were there uh, we really look forward to watching it and uh, um, listen very grateful to you for everything you've done for us um, and and do for us and uh, and uh, well done for having such competitive racing on I think for everybody all over the world because I think it's it's races and and races like that and meetings like that make all the difference to people and especially people that can't go racing like um, there's so many people at home that can't go racing and, and look forward to the racing coming on the telly and it, that's what I think makes the big difference. So thanks for everything and happy Christmas to everybody. Great stuff. Happy Christmas as well to Aidan. He might leave Hong Kong with a rather large Christmas present as well. Um, Graham, he's got uh, Mogul here. We'll hear from him about Magical later on. Um, what of Mogul though? He's promised a lot so far. He has delivered. He's won a Group 1 but um, there was big raps on this horse at the start of the season. Yeah, Aidan adores him uh, and it's clearly uh, that he goes extremely well on the gallops. He's a good horse on lots of pieces of form, Andrew, but he's a very good horse on one piece of form. That was the Grand Prix de Paris. Uh, Pierre Charles Boudot was on board, but it wasn't so much a jockey thing as a pace thing. He got a really, really strong, true pace from the off that day, and he showed what he could do in a strongly run race. He's bound to go close this weekend. He's getting weight from Exultant, but the key question is, it seems pretty well established now that Mogul is a horse who blossoms he really thrives when he gets strong pace to run at but it seems somewhat unlikely that he'll get an end-to-end -end gallop this weekend 
And still on him, Ed, not only did Aidan O'Brien adore the horse, but it would seem that Ryan Moore has as well. When he's had the choice of, of other horses in races, he's stuck with Mogul through thick and thin. Yes, that's uh, true, Andrew. And even speaking to Ryan uh, this week, and I asked him about the horse, he said that they've always thought a lot of the horse. I tend to agree with Graham on him. That Grand Prix de Parry win was super. He beat in swoop. It was then the runner-up in the arc. But when you look at the pace angle, his two best performances were in that race, the Grand Prix de Parry, and also in the Gordon and stakes at Goodwood, whereas I don't really see a genuine tempo here, so I don't think that will really favour him. I can't see him getting the race run to suit as he would like. OK. Exultant, uh, Graham, is the obvious place to start as far as the local horses are concerned. Our reigning horse of the year, previous winner of this race, but comes off two um, prep runs into this when he's, I wouldn't say he's off the boil, Fiora, he's beat him fair and square. Is, is he still at his best, do we think? I, thought, I think so, and I hope he is, because he is Hong Kong's horse of the year. And this has been his big day for ages. He was trying to give Furore, I think, £11 first time out in handicap company and was trying to give him £5 last time, both over shorter distances. Uh, I prefer to judge him on his performances in this race two years ago when he won in an epic tussle with Liz Grecia and last year when he ran very well for a long way um, to be third from a, a very wide draw. Look at his form figures in Group 1s in Hong Kong. 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1. Exultant looks super solid this weekend. Tactically, he looks like the one to make the break from some way out, to try and sustain that high rolling cruising speed from off the bend. And it's a case of whether Mogul can pounce on him late. But Exultant looks the solid one. He do, he'll, he'll fight as well, Ed. He'll be carried out on his shield regardless. Definitely. He's there to fight. Um, if he's challenged, as we saw when he won the Vars a couple of years ago, when Lee's Grisher headed him, he fought back to win. He's such a tough horse. He's an old warrior. And I think tactics-wise, too, he can lead. If there's not a lot of pace on, he can make the pace himself. He can make that mid-race move or he can sit back and uh, grind away to win. So I think he ticks all the boxes here. OK, well, a new horse, relatively new horse on the scene is Columbus County. He finished third in the Jockey Club Cup when Exultant uh, was second. He's trained by Casper Founds and he'll be ridden by Joe Marrera. He's, uh, his last run in particular, when he ran against some of the best horses in Hong Kong, he indicates that he's up to the class and uh, he might be causing a great upset based on his his form at the moment he only had two runs for the season he can only go in uh, he can only go better having his third run as i said i would say it is a big plus because how he hit the ground like how he hit the line last time was very impressive as more ground he's going to step to that is going to be for him i believe what are your thoughts then, Ed, on Columbus County and the other runners as well? Royal Julius, of course, we've got um, coming in from France. Yes, uh, I'll stick with Columbus County here. I think he's a bit of the X-factor horse in the race. He's would at Happy Valley first up, was super. And then I thought he ran a really good race last time out against Exultant Fiore. I was pleased with the way that he was running on. He looked suited by the step up to 2,400 metres. He's been really consistent here in Hong Kong, and I think he's gone to a new level in his second season here. All right, well, we'll hold off on the tips just for now. We'll do a recap at the end of uh, the show. That's the Longines Hong Kong Vars. Next up for us is the Longines Hong Kong Sprints. And uh, Classic Legends, of course, is the big talking horse coming into this. Ed went out to meet Classic Legend and Casper Founds. Hot King Prawn looking for that Group 1 win. And we'll touch on the international runners as well for the $22 million Longines Hong Kong Sprint. On a special edition of Hong Kong Direct this week, looking ahead to the Longines International Races uh, on the weekend. We've looked at the Vars. The sprint is next for us. If you want to get a complete rundown, though, of uh, the undercard, it's a good undercard as well. The multimedia showcase on the website, Racing to Win, previews each and every one of the 10 races on Sunday. Next up for us, though, is the Longines Hong Kong Sprint. There's $22 million on the table here. Classic legend gets the inside draw. First up here, the Everest winner for Casper Founds, Hot King Prawn from Barrier 5, big time baby Voyage Warrior, down on Smash for Japan. Ryan Moore right from Barrier 14. Tower of London gets a wide draw as well. William Buick in the Godolphin Blue from Barrier number 12. Uh, big Party, Jolly Banner, Amazing Star. Zach Purton from Barrier 2. Fat Turtle and Stronger. A number of these tackling group ones for the first time. Stronger is one of those from Barrier number 4. Now, before we get the thoughts of the boys, Ed was out and about uh, this week to catch up with Casper Founds and his uh, new inmate in his stable. That is Everest winner, Classic Legend. Come!
comes the Sikh legend, storms to the front and kicked away. The grey flash is now an Everest legend. Well, Casper, we're here with the Sikh legend. Um, it's been a bit of a process for him to get here, but now that he's here, how's he settled into your stable? Yeah, he's settled in well. Um, he's only been under my care out of quarantine for 10 days today, and uh, he's starting to take a chill pill. Yeah, he's starting to get there. I'm happy with him now. It's been a process for him to get here, and it's been a long process as well, just for him to be in Hong Kong. This has been something that's been on the cards for a while. Yep. Is it exciting to have a horse like him walk into your stable? Oh my God, it's, a, it's an absolute joy. I mean, it's a dream. A horse like this, rated number four in the world, you know, joint top sprinter in the world. Um, obviously, he's such a talented horse, and uh, it's just a pleasure for me to have my hands on him, and hopefully I can uh, enjoy the ride on from here. And as a horseman, Cass, when you look at the horse, what is it that makes him so talented from the point of view of a specimen that he is? Well, mate, he's got, he's got a bit of size about him. He's got a great demeanour. Um, he's a good eater. And he's got a, just a lovely presence about him. He's just very, very chilled in the stable. He's chilled to go out and do his track work, you know? All the attributes that, uh, that are good for a quality horse. And obviously, uh, he's got the most important thing. He's got the big engine inside, you know, which you need. Let's go back to the day of the Everest, the day of his biggest triumph. What was it like for you watching that race, knowing that after that he's coming to you? Oh yeah, I was very happy for, for the connections, uh, especially the owner Bond to get that result and for, for uh, Mr. Les Bridge, you know, he's done a great job with the horse and uh, he deserves all the success that he's had. He's looked after the horse really well. And uh, you know, it was great watching the race to see him have that explosive turn of foot and just, uh, you know, do what he did in such an emphatic way. We just hope we can bring him back to that sort of form in the new environment he's in now. That turn of foot that he's got, that's quite something, Cass. Yeah, there's not many horses that have that, you know. Uh, over the years in Hong Kong, we've seen many champions, and he's certainly gonna be one that rates up there with the, with the tops, you know. Uh, but now he's, he's here, he's here, he's based here, and uh, we just gotta plan his future and see, see where we go with him. And at the 150, Classique Legends drawn clear from Jonker. Uh, then profits the Mavin Task Causeway Girl, but Classique Legend, a, a classy act. Classique Legend by two in the arrow field. Well, Cass, thanks so much for bringing Classique Legend out here for us to uh, have a look at. As a trainer, you're not one to shirk a challenge, Casper. You've yep. taken horses all around the world. You've won big races in Singapore. Yep. What's this challenge like, though, to take over a horse like him with all the quarantine rules and to get him ready for the Hong Kong Sprint? To tell you the truth, it hasn't been easy, you know. Obviously, we're getting the horse at the end of his prep, um, where I've had to back off him and uh, to take him from Sydney to Werribee and just give him three weeks of quiet work. Just didn't want anything to go wrong, you know. Just wanted to nurse him to bring him into Hong Kong and then uh, try to prepare him for this race. It's obviously been a little bit tough because in the interim period, we've had to give him his vaccinations and do a few things which are not ideal leading into prep. As you know, when you give a horse vaccinations, their bloods go all over the place. But, uh, you know, we've got enough time now just see if he can bounce back from the trial and give us a nice bit of work next week. And I'm happy. You know, even if we can go into that race around 90%, it should give us a chance to, to be very competitive. Beyond Sunday, is a plan for him to take on the world? Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously with COVID and stuff, we don't know what's going on uh, around the world, but uh, we'll certainly be looking at the programs that are available to us and, and, and places we can get to. Uh, and, uh, you know, once we know what's going on and hopefully things will settle over the next sort of six months, then we can plan uh, accordingly and hopefully with a view to take him back to defend his crown in, uh, in, at the Everest. Well, Casper, it's been a real privilege for us to come and meet Classique Legend for you to show us around. Well, Thank thanks, you so thanks much for your time. Ahead. Yeah, cheers, mate. Good boy. Great to catch up with uh, Casper. Always appreciate the time of the trainers. Busy time of year, busy week, um, Graham. Obviously, this horse is very talented, but it's it's no easy task preparing a horse off this preparation for a Group One on the weekend. Yeah, I think it's a very straightforward case of um, get off the fence here. You're either concerned about his unusual, really unusual, fragmented preparation, or you're happy to say if he's as good as his Everest win suggests, he'll win. I'm a bit concerned, to be honest. Casper was making some very cautious noises. Uh, last week, his tempo has risen as this week's possessed, uh, possessed. He said he thinks he may have turned the corner, but it's it's an almost. Uh, I, I can't think of a horse who's had a preparation like this to be 
uh, fired up to win a major, major race, super wealthy race, the Everest, to do it so well, immediately leave his previous long-term trainer, go into quarantine at Werribee, have a long flight to Hong Kong, straight into a couple of weeks quarantine here, and then a gentle build-up with Casper. So I, I know that he's good enough to win, but I'm concerned that that uh, very unusual checkered preparation might just have left him slightly vulnerable. All right. What about the the others, um, Ed, the two Japanese runners? I mean, they bring some of the very best form, form around Grand Allegria. Um, they have drawn wide, though, but uh, what are your thoughts on them, their previous efforts, and what you've seen this week as well at the track? I did like the look of Tower of London now uh, this morning at the track. Uh, Andrew, I thought his piece of work on the turf was very good. Dan on Smash, obviously, that Grand Allegria form is super. She's an outstanding mare in Japan so uh, he's got to be some sort of a hope on that Japanese form the bit that concerns me though he ran eighth in last year's sprint and I think this is a bit of a stronger sprint this year so just how well he can go against the Hong Kong sprinters who are always super strong on their home turf uh, he just needs to take a step up I think if he's going to measure up here all right of course you're out of the track on uh, Wednesday morning as well Ed to catch up with Ryan Moore after he'd galloped down on smash to get his thoughts there's nothing come well, we're strenuous, but he's uh, he's been here before, and uh, it's just just getting a, a feel of him today. Um, yeah, he seems well. Uh, you know, he's a he's a he's a plenty of form in the book, and um, look, it's uh, it's always hard to beat the Hong Kong horses in the sprint, and um, obviously this year there's classic legend who looks, you know, he, he looked exceptional in Australia, so. Um, as always, it's a tough race, and um, you know we probably have to step up a little bit, but hopefully get a get a good run and perform well. Ryan Moore will be in the saddle then for Dan on Smash on the weekend. Have to respect the Japanese, I think, uh, Graham. But what about Hot King Prawn? He's been so close. I think three times now he's been run up in Group One company. Can Sunday be his day? Well, last year was almost his day. He just got run down late on by stablemate, beat the clock, and you won't find a more reliable, consistent, honest sprinter. Uh, super laid back, very versatile, bound to run well. But the suspicion remains that if there's an ace in the pack, he might come up just short again. Uh, he did pretty well to win the Jockey Club sprint. He got a slightly wide trip. Uh, it was a strongly run race, though, on Computer Patch, who was three parts of a length behind him in second. He's an interesting horse. There has to be a key galloping clue to Jockey Club sprint. Hot King Prawn bound to run well. But there might just be one to beat him again, I suspect. Mm. Computer Patch has drawn wide, Ed, but I assume they'll be positive once more. What about him and some of the others as well? In an open year, the likes of you know the Rattans, the Wishful Thinkers, the, the big parties as well. Even Big Time Baby got very close in Group 1 company last season. He did, yes, but um, he was then comfortably beaten last time out in the Jockey Club sprint. I would have given Computer Patch more of a chance had he drawn a, a decent barrier draw, but from barrier number 11, I'm a little bit concerned. I wouldn't mind if they rode him a fraction more conservatively. I feel he's gone a little bit too hard in his two most recent lead-up runs. He was terrific when he won the National Day Cup. Ratten, on the other hand, if he jumps with them, he's the value horse in the race for mine, Andrew, because he's been flying home at his last couple of runs. All right, OK. And again, we'll hold on to those final selections until the end of uh, the show, but maybe it looks like the open race, uh, the sprint, might be. Next up for us, with two down and two to go, is... The Longines Hong Kong Mile and defending champion Admire Mars is back, but he's got Golden Six. He's the golden boy of Hong Kong racing to tackle uh, this year. Of course, Order of Australia will be here as well. Recent winner of the Breeders' Cup uh, Mile. It's a strong race. Beauty Generation back once more too. We're two Group 1s down. We move on to the third Group 1 of the day, and this is the Longines Hong Kong Mile with $25 million on the table. Beauty Generation, two-time winner of the race. He'll jump from Barrier 3 for Zach Burton. Golden 60, the golden boy from 7. Admired Mars, last year's winner from 10. Kai Ying Star, a full leader from Barrier 9. Southern Legend, Group 1 winner in the field as well from Barrier number 6. Wai Cuckoo, runner-up in this race last year. Roman Eyes for Billy Lee and Ken Condon. Simply brilliant, mighty giant and order of Australia recent winner of the Breeders' Cup turf in America. Now, very pleased to say that uh, Zach Purden is uh, joining us on the line uh, now as well. Zach, thanks for, uh, for your time this afternoon uh, as we look ahead to the weekend. But first, before that, what a great Wednesday night it was, winning the IJC. Yeah, it was. Luckily for me, I had some good barrier draws and my horses were able to take advantage of that. We had some nice runs. They were competitive and we scraped again enough points.
Well, it's a nice start for the week, isn't it? Winning that as we head into uh, to Sunday's uh, action. Um, before we get into beauty generation, I suppose the other obvious horse to talk about is um, Exultant. How's he looking ahead of his uh, bid to recapture the Vars? Yeah, he's good. I actually watched him work this morning from the trainer stand. He come past me. He was striding out well. He had his ears pricked. Uh, he's, he's fairly happy. So I know the state was really happy with him. And, you know, it's a small field. Small fields can sometimes be tricky. But if we can just get him up there on the pace and give him his chance, um, hopefully he can do it again. Well, speaking of doing it again, what about Beauty Generation? And this would be some almighty comeback. He's a two-time winner um, of this race, of course. Third in the race last year, but he's just been a, a step off the pace so far this campaign. Um, comes into this race fresh. What are your thoughts? Yeah, as you said, uh, he's a little bit older now and he's a little bit more wary. He's got the younger horses coming through that have a little bit more spring in this step. And uh, with that in mind, we tried to freshen him up because we know he always goes well fresh. And if, if we can just get him back to some of the form he was showing earlier this season, that gives him a chance to run really well in the race. He's drawn a nice guy. He's going to get a good run. I'm still hopeful that he can do it. Uh, I haven't written him off yet because I can just feel in his races that he's just been idling himself down. And maybe that was, that was because he, he was just a little bit tired. And so... We'll put the spring back in him. Hopefully he switches back on. And if he does, you know, he can run us a big race. Yeah, you mentioned getting a good gate. He's drawn barrier three, so that's inside another likely horse to roll forward in, in Kai Ying Star. So you, assuming it's the, the same plan as always is to be relatively positive. Yeah, exactly. One thing he has lost is a little bit of his gate speed this season, which is a concern. But um, hopefully being fresh, he can just bounce out of the gates and put himself right up on the speed again. If we can lead, that's great. If Kai Ying Star wants to press on more, we're going to have to let him go. What are your thoughts on the rest of the field? Obviously, Golden Sticks he has been the, the big story developing over a, a couple of seasons. Uh, now, this is his biggest task uh, to date. But, you know, outside of the, the challenge you represent in Beauty Generation, we've got last year's winner in Admire Mars and the horse that ran second in that race as well last uh, season in Waikuku. All strong challenges. Yeah, I think it's probably the most interesting race of the day uh, for those reasons. And you throw in um, Water of St George as well from a good gate. Admire Mars has got to come from a tricky gate this year. Why Cuckoo hasn't raced this season, he's going to be first up. So there are a number of different factors there that could shape the race in a number of different ways. And I think it's very interesting. Zach, it's been a very different year, yeah. of course. It has been for quite some time here without the crowds. But this is still a very special day uh, for you riders on Sunday. Yeah, it is. Whether the crowd's there or not, these are, this is our marquee meeting of the season. It's one that we always look forward to. And for, fortunately for me, I've had a lot of luck at this meeting. Um, I probably don't go into this year's edition with a, as, as strong a book of rides as what I normally would, but there are horses there that can still run good races for me, and let's just hope that I can win one and maybe two. All right. Well, the very best of uh, luck on the weekend, and hopefully we're speaking to you after the race as well. All right. Thank you. So what about it to think uh, at a fairy tale finish on Sunday for Beauty Generation? Can he reclaim his crown? I'd love for him to be able to do so, but I don't think he can, Andrew. He's been a marvellous horse, uh, a great advertisement for Hong Kong racing ever since he won this race back in 2017. He's an eight-time Group 1 winner, and even when he didn't win this race last year, he was still gallant in finishing third. But I think his best days might be behind him. I think we saw that with his latest effort. Of course, the big local hope now, Graham, is, is Golden 60, who's been foot perfect all through last season and the start of this um, again. Just whatever they put in front of him, he keeps knocking down. And he knocks them down with a tremendous turn of foot. Uh, if a horse can run 21.6 for the final 400 metres in a good quality mile race, there's only a limited amount that the opposition can do. And if he does that again this weekend, uh, he's either going to win and become an international star or some people will be saying, what happened with the ride? Because if he goes 21-6 and doesn't win, then he's probably been given a lot to do. Traffic is a potential problem, but he's got tremendous acceleration, a wonderful strike rate, something really charismatic about the entire story. And that's why he's going to be one of the hottest favourites of the day. All right, it is quite a story as well. So with that in mind, so let's get a little bit deeper and uh, pull the, uh, the covers back on Golden 60 and what makes him so special. Amazing, you know. It's like riding a top sprinter. It's like the new Ferrari, zero to hundred, two point eight seconds, and similar like that. Golden 60 hitting the lead from encouraging. They're a big gap in front of the Hulk, and then he's the one for us. But he's a super smart horse, this guy. Golden 60, another nice win. 
200 metres left to go. Now the explosive turn of foot is in here from Golden 60. He's race clear now. More than this giving chase with Champions Way. He's been the gold standard so far. And Golden 60 stretches his record even further. He's a terrific four-year-old. No matter 12 or 2,000, you can you know, still have that kick. And it's pretty amazing. You know? um, so for him, I think mile and 2,000 is no problem for him. What a battle. Golden 60 goes to the top now. 10 starts, 9 wins. He's a cracker. It's those horses that want to run everything down until, you know, until it's over. Uh, he won't give up until, um, until he, he passed the other horses. Golden 60's a length away. He's the only danger. Player Del Puente, still a length. Golden 60, he's running out of time. He's coming now. Golden 60 drives. He's won it. He tries really hard uh, since his first race. And, uh, you know, track work is different. But in races, he, he, he switched on another mode and, you know, he, he get it done. It's a great story so far. That is uh, Golden 60. Not just the horse, though. Ed Vincent Ho, uh, the only Stanley Chan, and, and Francis Loy as well. They've all played their part. They have indeed. Well, for Vincent Ho, um, this is his superstar horse and could be a super day for him. He's got classic legend earlier on, but this is a horse that he's been associated with all the way through. And for Francis Loy, who has had a very good horse in the past in Lucky Bubbles, but he's now got a champion on his hands here, a horse who he's taken over as a PPG and taken to the top here. I think he's the best horse here in Hong Kong. He's only been beaten once from 14 starts. And whatever does beat him, if there is anything that beats him on Sunday, that will be the winner. Mm. We have last year's winner, Graham, in Admired Miles. We have last year's second as well in Waikuka. This would be some effort from John Sides to bring him first up. But Admired Miles winning this as a three-year-old, um, every chance he could have improved into four now. I think so. Uh, I disagree with Edward. It, it, it's not that straightforward. Uh, this is a high-quality group romp race with the Breeders' Cup Mile winner, Order of Australia, with last year's Hong Kong Mile winner, with Beauty Generation. All right, his rating has got some grey hairs on now. Uh, I can sympathise with that. But this is a really good quality race, and it, it's not just cut and dried for Golden 60. Uh, Admire Miles is super solid. Uh, he was very gutsy when he got the better of Waikuku Beauty Generation last year. He ran a belting trial race uh, in Japan last time. I have to think that he's bound to go very close. Tactics and a bit of luck could be very important here. If you take the view that Beauty Generation is not quite as good as his one, two, three mark suggests, I think we have six or seven horses within two pounds of each other. Good luck to Golden 60. I'd love to see him win, but it won't come cheap. Uh, Ed Graham just touching on their Order of Australia. We also have Romanised um, O from Ireland as well. He was a winner of the 2000 Guineas in Ireland in his three year old season, and subsequently that a Group 1 winner in France as well. That's true, but he's been a bit disappointing uh, in 2020, particularly his latest effort. I would have liked to have seen a bit more from him in that prep run at Dundalk. Um, so I'm inclined to leave Romanised out of my calculations. Southern legend always deserves respect. He always seems to go around at a big prize, but always runs his race. He's a Group 1 winner here in Hong Kong and twice in Singapore as well. Do we need to expand a little bit on why Cuckoo as well, Graham? Because this is a new horse, a new Hong Kong horse for Golden 60 to take on as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, John Sires uh, is dusting off an old playbook here. Uh, glorious days. It was a glorious day when he won the mile first time out. And Douglas White, I think it was 2013. So John's going back to that sort of plan. And we know that when he's on his A game, and that was this day, 12, years, uh, 12 months ago, that Waikuku is very capable of going close. It's not a one-act affair. This Golden 60 has that charisma and star quality, but he also has some very good opponents. And as you touch on, Andrew, a few new opponents to deal with here. Mm, all right, again, we'll hold on for the selections for the Longines Hong Kong Mile, but with one race still to go, and that is the richest race of the day as well. That is the Longines Hong Kong Cup. We're back to Bally Doyle to catch up with Aidan O'Brien as he speaks about his star mare in Magical. Can she make it a Magic 8 Group 4 Grade 1 successes? That's what she's trying to do on Sunday in the Longines Hong Kong Cup. The final of the four Group 1s on Sunday is the Longines Hong Kong Cup. It's the richest race of the day as well. $28 million on the table. And we have 
Scaletti heading the list for Pierre Charles Boudot. Trained by Jérôme Renier. Danon Premium from Japan. Winbright is unbeaten here at Chartin. Two out of two over the 2,000 metres. Fiore, former Derby winner, he won both of his lead-up races coming into this. Time Warp, we know he'll jump and run from the front. Dancing with the Dragons, been a bit of a success story over the last uh, six to eight months. Magical for Aidan O'Brien and Nomcorp, the mayor. Now, before we get into it, a little bit more detail. Let's go back to Bally Doyle and catch up with uh, Aidan O'Brien to find out about Magical and if she can create history on the weekend. She's an amazing mare, unbelievable mind. She's a Galileo filly. Um, she, she's anything from mile, mile and a quarter, mile and a half, uh, all types of ground, and uh, loves racing. Um, but she's a very unique filly, really. Magical by three quarters of a length to a day of his trying hard, then Fox Tower. But Magical is tough as they come, and Magical is going to cling on and win the champion stakes and a second win on Champions Day. It's magic hello but her side who's trying to exact revenge on Gaeth Armory is on the outside when Sun says it's magical for her second Irish champion states lowers the colours of Gaeth. On racing racing you can match any race anywhere in the world. Um, uh, year in, year out for the last ten years. Like obviously we had the Ark winner in, we had Guy there, we had Japan and we had herself and listen. We had Armory there that was second in the in the Cox's place, so we knew it was going to be a very special race. She's one of those fillies that's absolutely made out of concrete, you know. So she was very happy to go hard, strong gallop, and she was very happy to lie close to him. And and uh, and and she's lazy, so she, she's very happy to lie beside a horse, you know. And it was it was a matter of which one was going to crack the first, really. Most horses, when they're around this long, run at that level, at that age, they, they don't be competing like from as a two-year-old. Like she was running all those big group ones as, as a two-year-old, you know. So she's done it every single year since. Turned out, and she's very few races she has run in other than group ones, and she has travelled. She's she's danced every beat, Gary. She's um, a, an absolute unique mare, really. She's well-named Magical Graham, and this is, I suppose, one of the horses you were talking about at the start of the show as well. Um, just on her pure rating, at her very best, she's going to take the world of beating because she's already beaten the world's best racehorse this year in Gath. Absolutely. Two ways of looking at Magical from a romance point of view. You'd love to see her become Bally Doyle's first ever eight-time Group 1 winner. The list is very impressive. It's Minding, it's Yates, it's Rock of Gibraltar, and we know that she's good enough. Uh, but there is a rider. She's had a hard paper round in the last few months. And look at the words. Aidan's super lyrical about this May. He speaks in a beautifully evocative manner, but he talks about the Irish champion stakes. We knew it was going to be an absolute brawl. She's made out of absolute steel. And she'll probably need to be because she had a very tough race at Leopardstown, pretty tough race at Ascot in the soft ground, then went all the way to Keeneland. Tactically, it didn't go our way. She tried her very best. She'll do exactly the same again this weekend, and she might be good enough. But there is that slight question mark about whether a, a really tough autumn and another absolute brawl is exactly what she needs. Mm. One horse who's certainly coming into his own, Ed, is, uh, is Fiore. Now with uh, Tony Cruz, brilliant winner of the Derby a couple of seasons ago now. And looks like, and what we've seen so far, that um, he's, he's still improving again. Yes, that's right, Andrew. Of course, he won the Classic Mile in the Derby a couple of seasons ago, as you say. But then he was off the boil for a little bit, and you just wonder whether he would ever recapture that form. Since going over to Tony Cruz's stable, he ran a number of good races behind Exultant in the QE2 Cup and also in the Champions and Trader Cup. But he's gone to a new level this season, beating Exultant twice now in the Ladies' Purse and the Jockey Club Cup. I think he'll go close, and he's certainly the best of the locals. One horse that does seem to go to a new level, Graham, every time he turns up here is, is Winbright. Now, you could hardly say he's coming off a, a good preparation, but he's had two starts here at Chartin. He's won them both and <coughs> broke the track record in the process. Yeah, if, if he wins, I won't be bright, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, I, I think he's got a terrific record here. That speaks for itself. Uh, but he got an absolute pace meltdown uh, in that race where he broke the track record. And last year, he was pretty lucky to hold on. Good on him. He, he took advantage of the uh, opportunity. Uh, but uh, Magic Wand, another Ballyd Oil filly, was definitely unlucky that day, and I don't think Magic Wand is a magical. 
What are the others then, Ed? Um, Scaletti brings some top class form, beat the subsequent ARC winner, runner up in a group on, um, on its last start as well on Champions Day at Ascot. Yeah, I was really taken by what we saw from Scaletti in the pre the way that he won that day. That was a super performance. And then to come out and finish second to a day, but Ascot on Champions Day beating Magic Island Process. That was just his first run of the top level. But I think he's a big player here. And speaking to his trainer, Jerome Renier, he's not just a soft ground horse. He's more adaptable than that, according to his trainer. All right. That leads us perfectly into that very conversation. Ed with the uh, trainer of Scaletti, Jerome Renier. He has been beating the future arc winner Satsas and he's been winning the Prix de for the second time and he's, uh, for the first try at uh, the Group 1 level he's been uh, I mean, putting a big, big performance finishing second to Adeb and beating Magical so, but that was on quite sticky ground and on Sunday that will be a different scenario he'll be back on good ground but he's been winning a one mile straight group three in Deauville on really firm ground and he raced I think in 135 over one mile straight so that was a very good performance too so we're very confident with him as he's a really good horse and he, he never disappoints you. All right so there's Scaletti what about Dan on premium um, Graham again the, the form looks good if you, you cherry pick the very best of it. I think you're yeah, underselling him I'm really excited about this horse. I think he's right among the best of a, an elite group of uh, Japanese middle distance horses. He's been lightly prepped. He's sitting on, I think, a career best performance. He was fourth behind Almondai in the Tenno show last time. He went very much like the second best horse in the race for a long, long way. He went freely in the lead that day. Buick's aboard this weekend. I think he'll get a more patient, economical, measured ride. Um, I'm more excited about um, him uh, as a prospect and as a betting prospect than any other horse on the entire card this weekend. All right, OK, all right, we'll come back to him in a second. I think we'll hear his name once more, Ed. Um, of the others, we have to mention Time Warp. Um, he's won the race in the past, um, but he's a little bit all or nothing. What do you expect on the weekend? He is all or nothing. He's the winner of this race, as you say, three years ago. He holds the key to the pace, how the race will be run, but I don't think he'll be there at the end. I think this hasn't been the ideal preparation. He is getting older. I'll be interested to see, Andrew, as well, what Norm Cord does in the race. If you ignore her last run where she just went too hard in front, she's pretty consistent, and we know that she's travelled here before and performed creditably. So she would be some sort of a place hope at her best I think. And the only other run in the field is Dance with Dragon, runaway winner of the Premier Plate last season. We wish his connections well as well. As we need the selections then Graham, I think I've got a fair idea where you might be going in the cup but give us a rundown, the four group ones, who do you like? Okay here we go, Vars, nothing original but very safe, exultant, horse of the year. Uh, sprint for value, I think I'm going to take a chance on Computer Patch, I think he is still on the upgrade. In the mile, good luck to Golden 60, fabulous story, but again there could be value on the board. Uh, with Admire Mars, last year's winner and last but by no means least. All the best to Magical and Furore and company, but I think they've all got their hands full with this Japanese Raider, Dan and Premium. All right, Japan won three of the four last year, Ed Graham's got him winning two again this time round. How did you see it though? I'm more in favour of the locals, uh, to be honest, apart from towards the end of the programme. Uh, on with Exultant to win the Hong Kong Vars for the second time. I believe the Classic Legend's the best horse in the sprint, but I just think the preparation hasn't been quite right for him. And I think that Hot King Prawn's the horse who's had the best preparation for it. He draw, he's drawn well and he's coming off a big win. He's ready to peak. A Golden 60's the best horse in the mile and the horse I'm most excited about as a horse for quite some time in Hong Kong racing. The cup was the one I had the most trouble with, but I've gone for the Mighty Mare Magical to win and get that eighth Group 1 victory. There you go. Should be a special day on Sunday. For what it's worth, I haven't quite decided uh, who my selections are, so stand by uh, for more on that. But, uh, guys, thanks for all your hard work today. I would say it's all over, but there's still a couple more days uh, to go. But make sure you enjoy the action, Ed and Graham, on Sunday. Thank you very much, Andrew. Fantastic weekend in prospects, and I'd like to circle back to what Aidan said at the beginning about how important it is for people be, to be able to watch top quality racing uh, at the end of a really tough year. No spectators here at Shartin. It's a made-for-TV product. There'll be millions watching all around the world. No pressure for the broadcast lads. No, none at all, none at all. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Ed. Now, as far as uh, the weekend action is concerned, just so you get an idea of how it breaks down, the four group ones, it's a great programme. Ten races on the card, four, five, seven and eight. You can see the local times there, 2, 2.40.
uh, 3.50 and then 4.30 for the Hong Kong Cup as well. Of course, live on TV and also on the website as well. But that is the show. Thanks for watching. We're going to leave you this week, our classic replay with Wimbright taking out last year's Longines Hong Kong Cup. Enjoy this. We'll see you again on the weekend for the four Group 1 to be all the action from Hong Kong, direct to you. Time Warp turns in front narrowly from Glorious Forever. Winbright striding up, so too rise high. Magic Wand out, sprinted, then Adisa further back with Furore. Spread across the track, rise high, Rangers up, Glorious Forever. Time Warp, Winbright, then Adisa chasing up behind from Magic Wand. Rise high, Winbright, he's as tough as they come, Winbright. He's asserting his authority. Magic Wand down on the rail late, but Winbright will create a great day's history for Japan and takes the cup.